from regenerative agriculture in the in the food choices that we make and participate in every day to investing with intent where and how we allocate our money and the implications of those decisions are not always obvious yet our investment choices really do matter let's learn more about this from true industry insiders Nilo Sullivan is the Chief Investment Officer of Asia, Middle East, and Africa for Investment Solutions at Mercer. He is responsible for the design, implementation, and ongoing supervision of Mercer Investment Management's fund solutions for all AMEA clients and discretionary management services. It's a pleasure to have you here, Nile. Over to you. Uh, wherever you are, and, and thanks a million for taking the time to, to join us uh, today. Uh, we're going to talk about a number of topics over the next while, and what I'd like to try and do to start it is maybe just ground the, I, the concept and the idea of the size of the global assets under management. So, you know, just to give an idea of the size and ubiquity of the global asset management space, there's over 100 trillion that is managed directly by asset managers. And that's just what they manage. It doesn't include the wealth that individuals have in their own portfolios. And so when you're seeking and thinking about generating returns, generating change, it is those assets and the capital they provide and the reinvestment that they control that is a key part of everything that will follow. So. For many of you in the call, you'll feel, well, okay, what's that got to do with me? That doesn't overlap with my world. But actually, about 50 trillion of that 100 trillion is in various forms of pension and workplace savings solution. So if you have a 401k plan or some form of workplace savings, then your wealth figures somewhere in that number. And that plan will have a set of rules for how it engages, what it expects from the managers that manages assets, the types of assets that it will own, and the types of change that it will like to make. And your voice can make a difference. And you may say to yourself, oh, well, well Mike, what can my voice do? But small holdings can have outsized influences. For example, engine number one only owned less than about 0.02% of Exxon, but yet they were still able to mount a campaign to get board members elected. So therefore, you have the ability to engage through your plan, through the rules to see what you'll do on an ongoing basis. So that's the asset management landscape that we start with. Now, let's think about what we know, or as the IPCC would call it, the elements that we have high confidence in. Humans are impacting and have impacted climate. Increasingly, this impact is limit, leading to results that are going to result in temperature increases of one and a half degrees or more, and keeping it to one and a half degrees or less is becoming increasingly hard. Many, many governments and companies have committed to pathways to try and achieve this one and a half degree or less, and that is going to result in actions. It's going to mean that we are going to do less of some things and more of other things. And investors have got to factor that into portfolio design. So now I want to spend a little bit of time talking about sustainability and impact. Because what I've just talked about leads to you having to consider the four R's. And those four R's are return, risk, regulation, and reputation. And it is the second two that are going to influence the first two. Reputation is going to put a soft cost on externalities that have been ignored up until now. There will be threats on social license to operate for individual companies. Regulation is going to put a formal price on the externalities that were previously reward, ignored. And that is going to lead to people losing their actual license to operate. And that regulatory side is critical. Without regulation, it is going to be impossible to achieve the goals that we talked about a few minutes ago. And sustainability is just the incorporation of those factors into your investment decision. Some people will say, isn't that just investing? And I would say it is. But when I started my career 20, 25 years ago, I didn't see much talk about it in the textbooks or the risk variance models and all the things that are going on. So it may well be just investing, but you have to make sure that it is being incorporated on an ongoing basis. And then on top of that, impact is intentionally making investments to cause those outcomes to occur. Ideally, outcomes that would not have happened if you had not made that impact. And it's referred to as additionality. But you're doing it while still seeking an investment return. 
And everybody is going to have to figure out where on that journey they want to be between the incorporation of sustainability into their risk and the impact that they want to make. Now, one thing that I'd like to say, and I, I wish I didn't have to say it in the day that's in it, but this is going to be hard. The world is powered by fossil fuels and by processes that release CO2, be it plugging in, keeping cool, moving around, making food or manufacturing. These are all processes that currently use fossil fuels or emit CO2 today. And when you consider that the world is adding a city the size of, or the equivalent of a city the size of New York to the world every six to 12 weeks, it brings into, con, into, in, into focus the amount of construction and manufacturing that that will bring. We also have to consider that the developing world are aiming to have similar standards of living to those in the developed and they will be looking to try and get to there. And so we have to think about the trade-offs between those. We can't just have a hard stop. We also have to recognize that by changing behaviors of companies, by changing the behaviors of some of the highest emitters, that will be the way to have the greatest outcome. Divestment, unless you ally it to the other things we've talked about, regulation, taxation, consumer action, it just won't work. All it will do is increase or decrease the, the price that people will have to pay for those prospective income streams. So it's going to require actions across all those areas. So what to do for you as an investor? Well, first of all, you've got to figure out what your beliefs are. Where do you want to be on that spectrum between sustainability and where do you want to focus your impact? So to maybe make it a little bit more real, let me give you an example. We were working with a large asset owner. First of all, using our right tool, they took a temperature check, excuse the pun, of where they were at a point in time. They used that to then set their key beliefs and principles. They first of all then looked at voting and engagement. How were the people that were managing their assets, be they actively managed or passively managed, engaging and voting with the companies that they owned? They made sure that key priorities were set and that they were communicated to those asset managers. And they monitored on an ongoing basis that the managers were voting, how they had voted, and what initiatives they were going to engage in. They then considered how their portfolio was going to transition. They set a science-based target for where they wanted to get to with key staging points that were going to be marked along the way. They looked at the assets that they owned. They looked at those that were green, embracing the change, the gray, the gray that had a lot of change to be done, and the in-between where things could be done on an ongoing basis. And they built a plan whereby they were going to own more of the green and influence the in-between and avoid the gray, but all subject to the levels of price in the marketplace, what they referred to as decarbonization at the right price. On sustainability, they made sure that every manager that they worked with incorporated it into their risk and return lens, that it wasn't just a quantitative process. They wanted to make sure they were thinking about all these factors on an ongoing basis. And they made deliberate allocations to a number of thematic strategies that were going to create return opportunities from this transition. And on the impact in the areas where they had the highest belief, they considered impact investing in those spaces and directed their capital there. And lastly, in order to make sure that their overall reputation was guarded, they codified all this into a sustainable investment policy. This was presented to their senior stakeholders and was available for communication as required externally. So before I hand over to, to Klaus to bring this on a little bit further, I'd probably like to just get you to kind of think about what are the, the key takeaways. I think the key takeaways for everybody on this call, be it you individually or for those of you that have stewardship of broader asset pools. You've got to figure out what it is your beliefs are, how do you want to incorporate sustainability into your investment, and where do you want to focus on an impact on an ongoing basis. Thank you.